Hello, everyone, and thanks for being here. My name is Yuma Turon, and I'm a postdoctoral researcher at the Ercilia Open Source Initiative. Today, I would like to present to you the work we are doing in creating the Ercilia Model Hub, a hub of artificial intelligence models for global health and drug discovery. Let me share my screen first. So, as we all know, this is the disease burden worldwide is quite uh, unbalanced, with the majority of disease burden in high and upper middle income countries due to non communicable diseases, whereas low and lower middle income countries still have high burden of disease due to non to communicable, meaning infectious diseases. If we put this into the world map, we see how the Africa region, as well as the Southeast Asia and South America region, they in many countries the disease burden of uh, due to, to communicable diseases is still very high. Uh, more than 50% actually of the total loss of, of healthy years of life. Conversely, when we look at the drug discovery pipelines, we see that the majority of the drugs in development are, are currently targeting non-communicable diseases, meaning communicable disease, diseases that affect mostly high and upper middle income countries, whereas communicable diseases are only accounting for less than 10% of the drugs currently in development. The reason for this imbalance is mostly the high cost of bringing a new drug into the market, estimated to be at $1.3 billion per drug, which effectively neglects those diseases for which the return on investment is deemed, is deemed too low. At the Ercilia Model H, at the Ercilia Open Source Initiative, what we are trying to do is to revert this trend by applying artificial intelligence to drug discovery pipelines for infectious diseases. Artificial intelligence models hold the promise to revolutionize the drug discovery field basically by now enabling the screening of a larger number of molecules in less time, making the process much faster and more efficient for low resource settings. The first success stories of artificial intelligence are already out there with the first drugs completely designed by a computer already entering clinical trials in Japan. This is great, but what happens in what happens in day-to-day -day life in in research in research institutes worldwide is that artificial intelligence is still far from being widely implemented. With, in a survey to more than 300 scientists, they report that the main barriers to adopt to fully adopt artificial intelligence methods in in, in experimental research are first the lack of knowledge and expertise about the technology, so lack of education, and also lack of knowledge about the tools that can be used for it, as well as uh, the lack of relevant case studies, meaning benchmarks for, the, for their particular experiments. So artificial intelligence models are still regarded as black boxes where many scientists cannot use because they lack the, the training, the skills, or also the, the information on how to use them. What we are trying to do at the City Open Source Initiative is to create a hub of ready-to-use artificial intelligence models so that the researcher can just come with a question, for example, in a drug repurposing effort, why is a drug useful for, select a relevant model, and then simply without needing to understand what is happening inside, if they are not data science experts, get an answer. So, for example, a particular approved drug can be also be, be used for a particular target. Actually, what goes inside all this process is uh, the training and validation of a machine learning model, which starts by raw data coming from experimental data that is that is then processed and finally and then fed into a, a machine learning training pipeline. And once this machine learning model is trained, it is fine-tuned and validated first in silico and, and then if possible also with external validations in the laboratory. And currently many Many artificial intelligence models stop here, so they are published when they are tuned and validated, but they lack this deployment feature, which enables the usage by the wide majority of scientists who are actually not uh, computer experts. So we are trying to add this layer of, of deployment to all artificial intelligence models applied to drug discovery. And for this, we are creating the Cilia Model Hub, which will contain 800 models and be released by, by September 2021, so in the coming months. Um, basically, in the Cilia Model Hub, each model will contain authorship report, whether it's it's developed by, uh, by the Cilia team or by a third party. Also, a link to a GitHub repository because it's a fully open source uh, resource, so all the code and underlying data is available. And finally, a summary of the model, how it was developed, why, and its applicability domain. Each model will be served as a, a user-friendly interface where a scientist can simply enter their query, for example, a molecule, and understand whether it's an active or inactive for this particular model. Um, the Cilia Model Hub contains two main classes of models. On one hand, models from the literature, 
um, as you know, artificial intelligence um, models are quite on the rise and there is a larger uh, an ever increasing number of publications um, related to them. So basically what we do is we, we search for, uh, for the scientific literature, select the models that are relevant to our mission and bundle them inside our inside the inside the Syria model hub deployment. For example, this very nice paper from Stokes et al in 2020, where they created a new antibiotic predictor and discovered halicin. So basically now we have bundled this model inside the Syria model hub and a scientist can come with its molecule of interest and it will get whether it's an active or inactive antibiotic according to this model. On the other hand, the Syria team also trains in house models Basically, they, we select data from relevant publications or even from collaborators in, in the field that are doing experimental research. As an example, in a drug screening campaign, we take a light which uses a large library of compounds and screens it against a, a certain assay. There is all these data points which tell you whether a molecule is active or inactive. So we take these, all these results, all these data points, fit them into our auto machine learning model, which is powered by a, a drug discovery resource, the chemical checker. Chemical checker was developed by uh, Ercilia, the Ercilia chief scientific officer and published last year in Nature Biotechnology. And it allows us to encode a large number of information into these machine learning models. I encourage you to read the paper today due to time constraints, I won't be giving more insight onto, onto the details of the chemical checker, but basically we're able to encode a large number of information about all these data points so that the computer can take this data and then our machine learning models are highly accurate. Once the machine learning model is trained, we validate it in, internally in silicon, if possible, with our collaborators in the field experimentally and finally deploy it within the model hub. An example of this would be the, this paper on antimalarial activity, where we took this uh, large screening of almost half a million compounds and then trained a model that we will now predict whether a molecule is active or inactive against malaria, thanks to this um, auto machine learning pipeline and is deployed within the Syria model hub. So finally, as a summary, we are in Syria, we are a charity that tackles infectious and neglected diseases. We are building the their Cilia model hub uh, of artificial intelligence models for drug discovery, which is powered by the chemical checker. And we are we believe in open science, so all our work is open sourced and we are always open and looking for collaborations. Thank you for your attention. Let me just introduce the team, myself and Gemma Turon. Mikael Duran is the chief scientific officer at their Cilia and developer of the chemical checker and Eduardo Gaudi, the chief executive officer. And I would be very happy to take questions. Thanks for your attention.